Hello guys and welcome to New World Eternum. I'm Lidic and I will show you everything that you need to know for the early, middle and late stage of the game. All the basic information about the Eternum world will be shared in form of episodes so feel free to check the other ones if you have missed them. If you want to support the channel or you want to know more about New World Eternum, make sure to subscribe and feel free to join my Discord community. So without further ado, let's jump into today's episode in which we will take a closer look at the two main pillars of the game. Those of course are the gathering and refining. The open world in Eternum is vast and filled up with a lot of different biomes. Starting from the open fields, going through deep forests, up to the high mountain peaks, as well as the desert itself, you will find many types of life on the island. The common between the all regions in Eternum is not only the enemies that we will face, but mostly the raw materials which can be gathered and then of course processed in the cities. When we talk about gathering, we have to know that there is four core skills related to it. The mining, skinning, harvesting and logging are those four professions. There is another skill which also falls into the category of gathering and this is the fishing. However, due to the specifics which the fishing has, we will talk about it in another video. Today our focus will be on the mining profession. Same as any other skill in Eternum, the mining has a total of 250 levels and each level after that will be considered as an aptitude one. Each aptitude level is separated in three checkpoints and for each one we will receive a box filled up with rewards. However, before reaching to the aptitude levels, we will have to start from the very beginning. The mining skill is focused mainly on ores and different metals. At the very start of your journey, there is not much that you can mine, but progressively with the time, you will be able to gather all the different stones in a turnum. The first and most basic ore in the game is the iron, as it can be collected from the get-go. It looks darker than a simple stone and can be seen from distance. The next one in line is the star metal, which can be gathered only after reaching level 100 in the mining profession. It has a distinctive blue color and can be spotted from a big distance due to that. After that we have another special ore called Oricalcum and it can be mined only after reaching level 150. The color of the Oricalcum vein is red and same as the star metal it can be spotted from far away. Last but not least we have the Mithril ore which is the current highest tier of raw mining material. It can be collected after reaching level 205 and same as all other ores it has a unique color which is purple. All the ores can be found across many locations in the open world but the quantity and the density will be different. Therefore it is really important for each miner out there to know the terrain better in order to prepare the correct route for his farming session. Now when we know the type of ores Let's take a look at the type of precious metals as they are also a big part of the mining process. The first tier of precious metals in Eternum is the silver vein. It can be mined at level 10 and it has a specific white grey color. Sometimes it can be hard to spot such vein if there are similar stones surrounding it. The next one in line is the gold ore. It can be obtained at level 45 and can be spotted in the open world due to its natural dark yellow color. Of course, the other one and the current last precious metal is the platinum. This one can be mined only after level 110 and it has almost identical color as the silver. There are also other types of materials which can be gathered through mining in Eternum. Those are the oil vein at level 20, all type of alchemy stones at level 50, lodestone at 75, sandstone at level 105 and of course the last brimstone at level 130. I will not go over the specifics for them as they are part of different professions but we will definitely discuss them in future videos. All ores are really crucial for the players as they all take place into the crafting system of the game. However, before getting them transformed, all type of ores 
have to pass through a process called smelting. The smelting is the refining profession directly connected to the mining one. So let's take a quick look at it and see the process behind making raw materials into ingots which will be ready for the crafting sessions. The smelting station looks like this. When you go next to it, you will see that there is different options showing up related to the level you have in the refining profession. At the top left side, you will see that the iron ingots is the first option that you have. In order to create such ingot, you will need only iron ore. The process doesn't require any level or additional materials and you will be able to produce one ingot for each four pieces of ore. The next one in line is the steel ingot. In order to craft this type of ingot, you will need level 50 in the smelting. This type of ingot is created by three iron ingots, but this time we will have additional resources requested for it. We will need one obsidian flux and two charcoal. The obsidian flux can be found in any small or large crate over the map of Eternum and will be needed when processing any higher tier of metal above iron. The charcoal can be obtained in the smelting station by using two of any type of wood. Make sure that you use the lowest tier of wood when creating charcoal as you will not receive any additional charcoal if you use higher tier wood. After the steel ingots we have the possibility to craft star metal ingots at level 100 in the smelting profession. For them we will need 2 steel ingots plus 6 raw star metal ores. Needless to say that the obsidian flux and the charcoal are once again part of the recipe. Going higher in the tiers we will see that at level 150 we can create orichalcum ingots. This type can be obtained by two different ways. The first recipe is using star metal ingots which will require 8 orichalcum ore, 2 star metal ingots and the regular flux and charcoal. The second recipe is using again 8 orichalcum ores but this time we need 3 platinum ingots and the regular flux and charcoal. Last in the section of normal materials is the material ingot. It can be made at level 205 and it requires 12 material ores, 2 orichalcum ingots and of course the flux and charcoal. There are 3 other ingots that we will skip in this episode as they have a legendary status and their usage is more specific and with that we will go further to the precious metals starting with the silver. Same as the iron, the silver doesn't require any skill in the smelting profession. It can be produced just by using 4 silver ores in order to receive 1 silver ingot. The next metal on the line is gold which can be smelted at level 50. For the recipe we need 5 gold ores, 2 silver ingots and the regular flux. Note that there is no charcoal required for this smelting process. Last but not least the platinum ingot can be produced at level 100 smelting. For the making of it we need 6 platinum ores, 2 gold ingots and only flux. And just before I forget about it, I will show you how to make this big fortune of coins. On your screen you can see an external site called New World Map. Spoiler alert to all the people who would not like to know the locations of the resources in Aeternum. With this site you can make a simple search for the type of material which you would like to farm. This way you will be able to see which are the hot spots where the material is found and you can also filter to add even other materials. Of course I will leave a link in the description so you can increase your productivity while farming in Aeternum. There are few more items that can be produced by the smelting station in Aeternum but I would suggest you to avoid them. The main reason for that is that the amount of resources which you have to exchange in order to obtain them is not worth it. Your goal should always be to obtain and use as many as possible ores in order to transform them into higher tier ingots. Then it is up to you to decide if you want to use those ingots for yourself or simply to sell them on the market to make a big fortune. I hope you enjoyed the basic tutorial about mining and smelting in Eternum. 
If you have any questions or you are curious to learn more, make sure to follow the channel and join my Discord community for which you can find the link in the description below. There will be other guides coming later on, so if you want to learn something specific, make sure to share it with me. Thank you so much for watching and good luck in the tournament.